Presidential candidate Senator Michael Bennett joins us now. Senator, good to see you. Do you think Bloomberg's interest into this race will hurt moderate candidates like yourself or Joe Biden? Well, we'll have to see. I think it's a reflection on how open the race is, and I, I believe it's wide open, and I'm sure that's why Mayor Bloomberg is giving it the consideration that he is. Bloomberg was mayor of New York for a decade. This is obviously a, a national race. Who is his constituency? Well, I think that he did a great job as mayor of New York, but that's a good question. He's going to have to demonstrate that as he runs. I, I, you know, I'm the only candidate in this race who's won two national elections in a swing state in this country, and I believe that's what it's going to take, uh, not just to consolidate the Democratic base, which we have to do, but to win back some of the nine million people who voted twice for Barack Obama and once for Donald Trump. And I, I believe that I, we've put together an agenda that is going to be attractive to those folks, and um, Mayor Bloomberg may be trying to do that as well. You've been out there on the trail. What will voters think of a 77-year-old billionaire candidate joining? I do think that voters are ready for a new generation of leadership. I see that everywhere I go. I mean, everywhere I go, I hear that from people. And he may hear some of that himself. Um, what people are saying to me mostly is that they're working really hard, but they can't afford some combination of housing, health care, early childhood ed education, or uh, higher education. And in other words, they can't afford a middle class life. And they are looking for answers to that. Just like the people I used to work for when I was superintendent of the Denver Public Schools, most of whose kids lived in poverty and felt that no matter how hard they worked, they just couldn't get their kids out of poverty. This is the re reflection of 50 years of an American economy that hasn't worked for most Americans. And I do think they're looking to nominate somebody who can speak to their concerns. So do you think Bloomberg is out of touch with those people? Uh, I wouldn't say that. I think, but I do think that there are a lot of us that have been out talking to people over the last six to ten months to a year, and that's a lot of conversations to catch up to. He would have a self-funded campaign, he says. He wouldn't accept any money, so he wouldn't be beholden to any powerful person or group. That being said, he also wouldn't have to necessarily qualify for the debates in order to get a national presence. He could you know, pay for advertisements right. all around the country. Uh, do you think that's fair to you and other candidates? Well, I don't, I, look, I, don't, I think what's not fair is the rules on the national debates. The, the DNC should not have been excluding people as early as they did. The, it rewarded celebrity candidates who have since left the race, who were able to make the debate stage but couldn't stay in the race. As I said earlier, you know, I'm the only guy that's won two races in the swing state, and it's been tough not to be on the debate stage, but the, it, it's been a reflection not of what I've accomplished in my elections, but the rules the DNC put in place. And I'm not surprised that Mike Bloomberg wouldn't want to be part of those debates because I think they haven't been very constructive in terms of delivering to the American people an image of the Democratic Party that's something they're going to rally behind. It, what we've had are gotcha questions that kind of play into the hands of Donald Trump, who's the master of that kind of format because he never tells the truth and he's a reality TV star, which is a great combination. Uh, if you want to uh, do well in those televised debates, it's a much less good conversation if you actually want somebody who will govern the United States as president. You, Trump hasn't been part of the debates at all up to this point. He's not been on stage, but you did tweet at the president. Let me ask you about this. You said, sir, this is a Wendy's response, and that was in response to President Trump's tweet on an order to pay a lawsuit, uh, a, a settlement in a lawsuit here in New York. What are you suggesting with that tweet? This is a I'm Wendy's. I'm suggesting that his, exp his explanation for his, his uh, donations to charities, which essentially come from a foundation that's basically been a criminal syndicate for the entire time that he's had the foundation, his explanation is laughable. And and this is getting more pathetic every week. You know, if you look at what the president tweeted over the weekend, anyone else in America who worked in a law firm or a bank or, or any institution in America would have been called on the carpet by HR on Monday. If they worked at CNN, HR would have called them on the carpet and said, stop doing that. It, and if you keep doing it, you're going to lose your job. And if that person responded to the HR department by saying, don't worry about it, I'm a stable genius. I have unmatched wisdom, which is how the president talks about these things, um, they'd be fired.
And what's even worse than that, while he spent the whole weekend tweeting out this nonsense, Iran was doubling the number of, of centrifuges it's using to enrich uranium, and the Chinese were cutting a new trade deal with countries that represent half the GDP of this world. This is why Donald Trump can only be a one-term president. He is destroying the national security interests of the United States, our economic interests uh, globally, and he's wasting our time with this with with these tweets that no one else in America could get away with and we shouldn't let him get away with it either. Uh, before I let you go, I want to ask you another question about the 2020 race. This race is likely to be won and lost in the country's suburbs. Do you think it would hurt the Democrats to have a nominee who's for Medicare for all? Oh, I think it would hurt us a lot. Um, the, the, the Denver Post or the Washington Post today has an editorial about Medicare for All uh, that reflects how completely fanciful these so-called plans are. They're not plans. They're, it's an ideology. And, and it would hurt us as Democrats in suburbs all over the country. I'll give you, you know, and I, by the way, I'm not making that up. Let me give you a data point for that. In 2018, when we took over the House of Representatives, when the Democrats took over the House of Representatives, 40 people flipped seats, and 39 of them were for a public option, my bill, Medicare X. One was for Medicare for all, and a lot of those people were running in swing districts and suburban districts. That says it all to me. I don't even understand why Medicare for all, speaking of the debate stage, is on the debate stage, because it would be catastrophic for Democrats, and it's not something that this country is ever going to be willing to, uh, to pass. Well, why do you think people like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are so high in the polls? If what you're saying is I true, why would Democrat voters be saying they want to support those people who have made Medicare well, for All a huge part of their platform? Well, I think they're supporting them for other reasons. They're supporting them because, you know, in Bernie's case, he's run before. He's one of the most famous politicians in the country, and Elizabeth is sort of a celebrity in her own right, and, and she's very well known across the country. But if you look at the polling on Medicare for All, it polls terribly. It's got 30 percent support among Democrats to say nothing about independents and Republicans. But Senator to Michael me, Bennett? the more important issue than any of that stuff is I don't want to spend the next 10 years fighting a losing battle again for Medicare for all when what we've got to fight for is, a, is an economy that will work for everybody, better schools for our kids, and, and addressing climate change. All of that goes, and building infrastructure. All of that goes out the window if we follow Bernie and Elizabeth over this ideological cliff of Medicare for all. Senator Bennett, it's great In to have view. you with us. Thank you very much Thanks for taking for the time. Me. Thank you. Good luck on the campaign Thanks. trail. More